Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Sonic Multiverse. As decided by my loyal viewers, we'll be jumping right back into What If Tails Became Infinite. I hope you're not getting bored of it at this point. Anyway, let's jump right in. Soliana, the City of Water, once governed by a constitutional monarchy, and now under the heel of Lord Eggman. This is where Silver the Hedgehog and Blaze the Cat now find themselves. They were both here to destroy the Death Egg in Wave Ocean, but before they could begin their assault, they had to come up with a plan. Hmm, maybe if I attack the West Wing, you can break into the Death Egg from the East. I'm not going to let you fight an entire army alone, Silver. Besides, there's no guarantee there won't be guards on my end as well. Eh, you're right. Well, maybe if we do an all-out attack, we'll most definitely be overrun. Yeah. Do you have any ideas? Well, if the Soul Emeralds weren't extinguished, I'd be able to turn to Burning Blaze and enter the Death Egg without any issue. But in their current darkened state, it's too dangerous to try. <sighs> if only I could figure out how to fix them. I'm sure you will, Blaze. Until then, I'm sure we can find another way to break into the- But before Silver could complete his thought, the pair heard running and clanking of metal in the streets below. Commanders Qbot and Orbot, with a battalion of egg pawns, were in hot pursuit of a lady in a white dress. All right there, Rebel Scum, or we'll have to shoot you! Qbot, remember your manners. Princess of Soliana, please halt, or we will have to shoot you. My father's kingdom will not fall to the likes of the Eggman Empire, and I will not back down. Well, we gave her a fair chance. Open fire! Fire was indeed spread but not from the egg ponds. Blaze leaped off of the rooftop with silver and destroyed all of the egg ponds. Cuba, I think it's time for us to make a tactical retreat. No time for that, let's get out of here. And with that, the two robots ran off to safety. The princess ran over to the rebel heroes. Thank you both so much. I thought I was done for. All in day's work, ma'am, er, your highness. <laughs> Please. My title may be Princess, but you may call me Elise. I take it you two are part of the Resistance? Blaze nodded. Yes, we're looking for a flying fortress known as the Death Egg. Have you heard of it? Elise seemed to flinch a bit at the mention of that Death Egg, but recomposed herself. Y yes, I've heard of the Death Egg. When Eggman arrived and declared himself ruler of Soliana, my father and his army fought back. Little did they know the firepower that base held. Since his death, I led my father's army to try and defeat the Eggman, but any attempt against his empire has been swiftly defeated by a black and red devil. Silver and Blaze knew exactly who she was referring to. Shadow. Don't worry. From one world to another, I understand what it's like to fight for your people. We will assist you. Elise smiled. Thank you both. She then unveiled a gemstone she possessed. Here, my father gave me this before he... He, he said it was a good luck charm. Right now, I think you two could use it. It was no mere lucky charm. It was, in fact... A chaos emerald? But it seems duller than usual. Curious. It seems that whatever's affecting the soul emeralds must be having a similar effect on the chaos emeralds. Still, I'm sure it'll help us. Thank you, your highness. We won't let you down. We promise that we will save your kingdom from the tyranny of Eggman. With that, the pair of heroes set off to track down the Death Egg. Elise raised her arm. Good luck, you two. Godspeed. As a pair raced towards Wave Ocean, Silver couldn't help but comment. Hey, Blaze, does all this feel familiar? No, it feels perfectly normal to me. Eh, it's probably just a time travel thing. We can worry about deja vu later, Silver. Now, I think I've come up with a strategy for us to break into the Death Egg. First, we need to... As the heroes conversed, they didn't notice a mysterious figure watching them from a distance. Elsewhere, 
Amy Rose and the rookie were breaking into the death egg looming over Lost Valley. They didn't have time to be stealthy as they quickly made their way towards the prison hall. Security tried to stop the rebels, but they were quickly destroyed by Amy's Pico Pico hammer. She wasn't about to let anything stop her from saving Sonic. The rookie made sure just to stay out of her way. All right, Sonic should be around here somewhere. The rookie signed, asking how she knew. Well, let's just say I have a lot of experience tracking him down. A weak voice came across the room. <coughs> you got that right, Ames. There was Sonic, shackled and beaten, but his spirit still hanging on. The heroes ran over to the cell. Amy was overjoyed to see her darling Sonic in one piece, while the rookie attempted to put in as many codes as he could think of, trying to unlock the cell. But before he could find the correct code, a large thud could be heard behind them. You two made a grave mistake coming here. Now, die at the hands of Zavok. Amy raised her hammer. She wasn't about to give up on Sonic after getting so close. Without a second's notice, the battle began between the Rose and the Zeddy. As the combatants began swinging at each other, Zavok sounded more annoyed than engaged. Cease this nonsense. I vanquished hundreds of foes stronger than you before you were even conceived. You don't stand a chance, child. Ugh. Zavok's words were cut short as Amy smacked him right in the skull. She continued wailing on the Zeddy, blow after blow from her Pico Pico hammer. But these blows simply enraged Zavok as he finally lashed out, smacking Amy against a wall. Ugh, perhaps I underestimated you, child. Trust me, jerk, you did! Amy whipped out her hammer and began spinning rapidly forming a small tornado in the center of the arena. As the fight carried on, the rookie kept typing in codes, trying to free Sonic, until eventually, it finally worked. Gadget deactivated Sonic's shackles and opened up the cell doors. Without a moment's hesitation, Sonic raced into the battle, engaging Zavok directly. Amy was overjoyed to see her hero, but before she could say anything, Sonic began wailing on Zavok, laying deadly blow after deadly blow, punch, kick, uppercut, home attack, until Zavok fell to the ground. Sonic was no longer sporting his signature smirk. He simply looked down at the Zeddy, breathing heavily, with a scowl of animalistic aggression. This was personal. Amy had never seen this side of Sonic. S Sonic? Sonic quickly snapped out of it. Ugh, sorry about that. Good to see you, Ames. And you too, pal. Glad to see you're doing well. The rookie smiled at this, before gesturing towards the exit. Right, let's get everyone out of here, then blow this popsicle stand. And with that, they opened up the rest of the cells, leading the rest of the resistance prisoners all the way to the exit, before blowing the death egg to smithereens. Once they were at a safe distance, the heroes began to discuss what happened the last six months. Hold on, so you're the leader of the Resistance? Huh. Well, ain't that something. I'm proud of you, Ames. Thanks. So, Sonic, about what happened on the Death Egg, are you... Sonic's body seemed to tense up with the question. I'm... I'm fine, Amy. Let's just focus on the war effort. Amy wanted to ask more, but she got an emergency call on her radio. It was from Commander Tower. Commander Rose, I hear you secured the package. Yes, yes, Sonic is okay. That's good to hear, because we have unconfirmed sightings of your two-tailed friend heading towards a laboratory in Soliana. Upon hearing this, Sonic blasted off at the speed of sound, racing towards Soliana. Gadget seemed a bit alarmed at Sonic's outburst. Amy cautiously chuckled. <laughs> he uh, has a tendency to like to run ahead. I'll catch up with him. You head back to base. With that, Amy set off, following Sonic towards the city of water. On the sandy beaches of Wave Ocean, Silver and Blaze could see the Death Egg overhead. 
they also spotted a particular black and red hedgehog standing on the beach, ready to crush the intruders. All right, Shadow, what's the deal? Shadow didn't respond. Very well. If you don't want to explain yourself, then get out of our way. In response, Shadow ignited his air shoes and rocketed towards the pair. The duo, expecting this, took action. Though Shadow was marginally faster, Blaze was able to keep pace, blocking him off with trails of fire. While Shadow was boxed in, Silver used his psychokinesis to grab the hedgehog. The Shadow tried to escape, but Silver held strong. It's no use, Shadow. I got you. The Shadow became enraged, began glowing red, and before Silver could react, he enunciated the words, Chaos Blast! A violent display of chaos energy erupted outward, sending Silver and Blaze flying. Crap, that didn't work. Time for Plan B. Plan B? We didn't discuss a... Blaze looked in horror. Silver unveiled the darkened Chaos Emerald. S Silver, don't! It's too unstable to... But it was too late. The unstable, dark Chaos Energy began to flow through Silver. In a flash of light, Silver's aura turned dark, his eyes whitened, and his aggression rised. He quickly induced Chaos Control, slowing down the flow of time, kicking Shadow in the back of the head, before knocking him onto the ground, only to pick him up with his psychokinesis and slam him into the sand again and again, each blow harder than the last. I won't let you hurt anyone else. Not Blaze, not me, not anyone. Silver. Silver looked over to his partner. It's done. You can stop now. Hearing her words, Silver returned to normal. His boosted form ceased. Uh, Blaze? Sorry about that. I... I don't know what came over me. Just don't worry me like that in the future. Come on, let's get going. But before they could leave, Shadow returned to his feet. Though the attack from that dark silver had been a lot, he still had enough energy to defeat two rebels. But he wasn't prepared for a third... Shadow was suddenly hit hard with a hyper go on hammer, sending him onto the ground, knocked out. Both Silver and Blaze were surprised, but grateful to see someone come to their aid. Blaze, looks like to me, we might have a guardian angel. And this is where we'll be leaving this what if for right now. What did you think of the surprise appearance of characters like Elise and Whisper the Wolf? And where do you think the story will go from here? And more importantly, what do you think will happen with the Chaos Emeralds? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'm ComicFan13, and I hope you have a good day.